Right, dear colleagues, uh, good afternoon and welcome to uh, our optical, uh, um, uh, optical seminar. I think this is the first seminar of this year. And I'm uh, happy to introduce you uh, Dr. Denis Garoli from Italian Institute of Technology uh, from Genova. Uh, Denis has been has, has graduated from uh, University of Padova, specializing in uh, DNA uh, nanophysics and plasmonics and nanotechnology. And today we will hear a uh, talk entitled Enhanced Optical Spectroscopy for Multiplex DNA and Protein Sequencing with Plasmonic Nanopores, Challenges and Prospects. So I just, uh, let me uh, kindly remind you about the format. So once you have a question, please rise up, rise up your hand and I will give you a word and unmute you, uh, or you can type, you type your question in chat and then I will simply uh, uh, read it out. So, Dennis, please, stage is yours. Okay, so thank you very much, Mikhail, first of all, for inviting me for this talk. Um, so, today I would like to discuss uh, for about an, one hour on um, nanopores, and in particular on plasmonic nanopores and on the potential application of this technology for uh, sequencing, um, but we will see that uh, the major discussion will be on uh, um, single molecule detection and uh, optical spectroscopy. So why we are interested in, um, in this field of research? Well, you know, uh, sequencing is now uh, a very extensive uh, used uh, technology. But uh, the community is still looking for a reliable technology for third generation sequencing. So a, a method to sequence directly a single molecule. This because uh, uh, it means that you don't need a long preparation of the sample. Uh, you can read uh, directly your, um, your molecule uh, in, a, in, a, in principle in a simple device. You can have less error due to the, the, the replication of the DNA that is typically used in the standard sequencing technology at the moment. You can analyze both DNA and RNA. And in principle, it could be a, a huge jump for diagnostics. To date, uh, there are two major uh, companies that uh, enable to perform single molecule sequencing. One is um, Pacific Bioscience that uh, use uh, an optical uh, readout method. So a photonic device that is able to read uh, a single molecule of DNA during replication. We will see later how it works. While the probably the most interesting um, company at the moment is Oxford Nanopore that, uh, per, that enable to perform uh, single molecule uh, sequencing by using uh, nanopores. And the readout in this case is based on uh, electrical current, so it's an electrical uh, signal. Obviously, both of these uh, um, technologies have uh, some limitation. For example, uh, in particular, Pacific Bioscience is pretty uh, expensive in terms of uh, the platform, while Oxford Nanopore is very cheap, but uh, the error rate is still, uh, you know, in principle, if you want to perform sequencing to for a diagnostic application, you really need to have uh, an error rate uh, well below 1%. So fraction of percent of really something like 0.1%. Um, while at the, up to date, uh, Oxford Nanopore can ensure some, some percent of, of uh, precision. It means that 
in a read of 100 bases, you always have some error. So you have to read again and again and again multiple times in order to, you know, to reduce the, this error. Anyway, how it works? Uh, it's pretty simple from the conceptual point of view, because uh, if you have an aperture in a, in a membrane that separates two chambers, you can call them uh, cis and trans side of the chamber, and you apply a voltage, you can drive a charged molecule through the pore. In particular, DNA is a negatively charged molecule. And uh, obviously, if the pore is uh, narrow enough, uh, the molecule is forced to pass through the pore in an unfolded state. It means that if the, your pore is too large, it means uh, above a few nanometer, the molecule maybe can pass completely folded, so something like a sphere or a, a network or of uh, wires. Uh, on the contrary, if the pore is very narrow, the molecule can be forced to pass through it uh, in an extended way. So in principle, you can read the information contents in the in the molecule during the translocation. And uh, what about protein? Protein sequencing is now probably a topic more uh, hot with respect to, to DNA. Because uh, DNA I'm, I'm sorry, until we get too, too far yeah. beyond all that. So um, do I understand right that basically, uh, so this technology, I mean, it doesn't feel where, it doesn't know anything about the molecule itself, only that it's negatively charged. Yeah. Yeah, so it's in specific to, uh, to molecule type. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So you just you just measure the current which passes through that, and this current is of order. So what is the approximate charge of one molecule? No, the charge of the of the DNA is uh, in general negative. So mm -hmm. with a negative charge molecule, is easy to to you know to drive the molecule applying a positive a positive uh, potential and. Uh, Reading just the translocation is very simple. So the current step could be some pico amp, and the duration of the of of this uh, you know of this uh, signal is something like microsecond in the microsecond range. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. It, it means that uh, if you want, you know, the whole molecule pass through the pore in a microsecond. In the, so, if you want to read the content inside the molecules that could that could mean reading uh mil uh, thousand uh, and yeah several thousand of uh, different signals you be you need to be very very fast okay or to reduce or to reduce the speed of translocation but we i will discuss this later okay, okay. so uh, so looking at protein uh, there is a major issue because while uh, DNA is always negatively charged. Protein is not charged in general uh, because you can, uh, a protein is made of uh, different amino acids up to 20. And the different amino acids can be positive, uh, can be negative, uh, can be neutral, depending on the pH of the solution and on other, on other parameter, uh, mainly on, obviously mainly on the solvent you use. Uh, so, driving a protein through a nanopore by applying a voltage is not is not trivial at all, but obviously possible because, for example, you can consider a protein where you attach a, a one tail uh, a, a negatively charged um, molecule, for example, a piece of DNA, and you use this this section to drive the the protein to the pore. Also in this case, uh, the concept is similar. So if the pore is narrow enough, the protein should be forced to pass through the pore in a almost unfolded uh, configuration. Um, but we will see later where are the, you know, there are, for protein, there are a lot of issues to be solved uh, in order to obtain something. So uh, how this um, signal uh, appear in a real experiment is something like this. So 
this is a representation of the Oxford Nanopore platform. They use uh, um, something that is called a biological nanopore, so it's a transmembrane protein. This is, is embedded uh, in a, a lipid bilayer, so it's a very fragile <laughs> chip, but uh, it's, it seems to be very reliable for measurement. So they modified this protein with uh, some molecular motor and some additional with some additional functionality in order to control the translocation to unfold correctly the molecule. And during the translocation, you obtain uh, uh, this this, this uh, trace in in uh, in the current uh, versus time. And the in principle, you should observe four different level of current corresponding to the four different letter within the DNA. Okay. Obviously, uh, this is possible, but the error is extremely high. So you need to perform, typically at the moment, Oxford Nano 4 performed this measurement a lot of, uh, with a lot of repeated, uh, you know, they repeat a lot of time the, the same measurement in order to perform a, a, medium, a mean and to obtain a reduced error. So, uh, Dennis, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm very, I'm very, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not a specialist. Let's let me say so. Uh, but when you say that each different letter gives a different current, that means that they, they have. Uh, why does it happen? They have different charge. Uh, like no, they, uh, they have different, uh, um, you know, f uh, uh, physical and elect uh, and chemical properties. So they have different conformation. Okay, so mm -hmm. different size and different, slightly different charge. So it means that during the interaction with the narrow aperture in the in the in the narrow pore, the ions that flow through the through the pore is uh, f modified a little bit. So the current level change, and there is this slight change in the current level that depends mm -hmm. on the different section of the molecule. Okay. So you have, uh, for example, here you, you can see a level for the letter T, a level for the letter A, a level for the letter C, uh, for the letter G, okay? But they are colored colored with different colors here, right, somehow? No, 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 this is a label-free method just based on... Uh, no, I mean, I mean, in the current, there are different colors. Uh, there are bands of uh, blue, green, and... Yeah, in this, in, this, in this figure, yes. Mm -hmm, okay. Mm -hmm. So I can think but that... Obviously, one of them is just bigger and it opens up a channel and current is different so, you know, in a way. No, no, the channel rem remains the same. So the mm -hmm. channel is something, so the protein is, is something like this, you see here. And so you have a sensing region that yes. is the, the, the section of the protein that is more narrow. So the narrowest part of the protein with a, a thickness of close to, you know, one nanometer, okay? One nanometer means, uh, the size of three nucleobases, so three letter of the of the DNA uh, takes one nanometer. Okay, so in the sensing region, you are sensitive to three letters, close to three letters. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So during the translocation, these three letters change, obviously, and you can collect the the signal that is, you know, correspondent to these three letters. And you can you, you need then to deconvolve the signal in order to extract the real information. is a is pretty is a pretty complicated analysis, but in a real experiment you you obtain this trace with different levels, okay? And then you have to obviously to perform that analysis in order to obtain the, the trace you want from the real sequence of the molecule. Okay. Uh, then is, there is a question in in in, in, uh, in chat. Yeah. So how do you create such small sizes of pores? In this case, these these are natural uh, nanopores. So it is protein that you can buy. Okay. Okay, but uh, the membrane is a real building. A, a membrane? membrane is a lipid bilayer. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So you create a, a, a is a is a standard procedure to create a lipid bilayer with something like you use for create micellas or something like this. 
So uh, it, we saw it's a self the... is a self assembly yeah. structure prepared in solution. So and that was shown in SEM image on the previous slide as well, right? No, the yeah, no, this is just a this one is a computer. Uh, okay, computer. I, I just computer imaging, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Okay. So, um, okay. So if we look at DNA, uh, this is what happens. So we enter in the in this um, pore, biological pore, with uh, our DNA that is uh, at the beginning is double helix, so, so it's separated with two, two just a, sing, a single one, and you read during the translocation the section of the of the molecule. You, here there is some representation of the different size of the different nucleobase, and you in principle you should obtain something like this. So four different let, uh, level of current corresponding to the four letter. So uh, if we consider Protein, a protein is uh, there is a, a huge difference. A difference because protein, uh, okay, in principle you can have your protein, you can unfold it, and you translocate the in a linear manner your protein to the pore. But there is a very huge difference because protein is not made of four letters, but it's made of twenty letters. So twenty letters means that in principle you should you should recognize recognize from your electrical signal 20 different levels okay and this is almost impossible well actually someone is starting to demonstrate that it could be possible but uh, you know it's very complicated to read different uh, 20 different level in a in a in a nanopore signal so why for this reason um, the community now is, is looking for alternative approach but uh, okay so this is a family of nanopores that is in particular in particular used by the Oxford nanopore technology, so biological nanopore. But as you mentioned, or as you asked before, these nanopore are um, easy to be prepared because you can prepare them in solution with this lipid bilayer um, self-assembly structure, including this, uh, pro uh, this uh, transmembrane protein uh, on on it but uh, they are also pretty unstable and not robust at all uh, so it could be better to look no it could be yes it, it could be better to look at to alternative method in particular uh, the other huge family of nanopore is uh, the nanopore prepared prepared in solid state uh, membrane so it means that in this case you use uh, standard nanofabrication approach to prepare a narrow aperture in uh, typically in semiconductor in semiconductors and in this way you can play a lot with the with the fabrication so you can obtain pores between one nanometer or fraction of nanometer up to tens of nanometer or microns you can prepare a single pore you can prepare obviously uh, array of them and you can also play with the materials you can prepare directly on semiconductor or in metal and so on so solid state nanopore are now used for a, a lot of different applications so it's a very huge uh, field of uh, research at the moment and is a pretty it's a pretty new also huge field of research because i think that the first uh, paper on that is less than 20 years ago and um, so the major uh, the major topic is uh, uh, sequencing but uh, sequencing with solid state nanopore is really really complicated to be achieved so uh, it's better to look at alternative met at alternative applications so in particular to to single molecule detection this is very easy to be done so to detect the events of translocation of a single molecule you can uh, do it with uh, mm, dna and rna and rna to with protein uh, with virus obviously uh, but uh, you can use uh, these solid state nanopores also as filters and filters for for example for water desalination for 
uh, ion pumps uh, or, um, to to generate energy uh, also in uh, in uh, optoelectronic device. Uh, and now, I'm sorry, I, but, but with this uh, solid state nanopore, so is it really uh, possible to make this kind of one nanometer? Or yeah, yeah, yeah. I will show you later. I will show it okay. later. Okay. And now, uh, um, an interesting topic, at least to, to me, is uh, the use of nanopore to uh, to read and uh, modify digital information. So in particular, uh, if you consider a DNA molecule, you can modify it uh, in order to uh, decorate the molecule with some um, nanomaterial in order to uh, get uh, a digital uh, code enco en encoded in, uh, in your molecule. And you can read this code through by means of a nanopore. So how they appear in they can be prepared in different uh, on the, with different materials. The most used one is silicon nitride. Uh, silicon nitride is a, a material, a semiconductor material that you can easily prepare by chemical vapor deposition, and it can be prepared uh, at, with very low stress. So it means that uh, you can reduce the thickness of your layer down to. 10 nanometer, for example, and you have a self, uh, a very stable layer that uh, don't need uh, uh, a substrate. You can do you you can use also silicon, for example, a very thin layer of silicon. Mm, you can use uh, uh, other oxides, like for example, of aluminum oxide or titanium oxide. And another um, extensively used uh, family of nanopore is uh, prepared with uh, quartz capi uh, with uh, quartz capillary. So it means that you have a quartz pipette and you pull it in order to 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 thin the the, the diameter of the of the pipette uh, and to obtain a nanopore. I will show you later how it works. So. Considering the fabrication, there are several uh, methods that can be used. Mm, all of them are, no, all of them, almost all of them are based on uh, nano, nano fabrication uh, methods used in, uh, in microelectronics. So ion beam sculpturing, for example, you can um, use argon ions to thin a layer of uh, of your material where you previously prepare an, um, a cavity and thinning the metal, you obtain this, uh, this aperture, but is complicated to control the diameter in this case of the pore. So maybe in this way, you can obtain something like a few tenths of nanometer. Uh, the most used method uh, is uh, focus electron beam scattering. And this is done in a TEM, uh, typically in a TEM uh, facility. And this is the major limitation because uh, with a, a focus electron beam, you can create a hole in a thin semiconductor, in a thin semiconducting layer uh, with a resolution that can be also below one nanometer, thanks to the spatial resolution that can be achieved with the electron beam. But the major limitation is uh, that, uh, first of all, you need a very thin, la a very thin uh, layer of semiconductor. So it, it requires something like 20 nanometer maximum. And your chip must be suitable for the, uh, for the system. So you need to work with this five millimeter square uh, chip that can be loaded in your TM system that is also very expensive and time consuming. So it's a, it's a major limitation for this kind of fabrication. Another approach use uh, focus ion beam. So the standard FIB uh, system, and you can play with uh, ions, in particular gallium or I, uh, helium ions to directly spatter your uh, material. In this case, you can prepare 
um, the pore in any materials, so in uh, semiconductor or in metals or whatever, with the major limitation is related to the final uh, diameter you can achieve. So you, it's very complicated to go below 10 nanometers. Also, 10 nanometer is a uh, is is extremely complicated to be achieved because the uh, focus ion beam has a spatial resolution of uh, about 20. But you can play a lot because you can create uh, in a very well controlled uh, way your pore also in array and you don't need to use small chip. Uh, you, you are not limited in the thickness of the membrane uh, and on the material. Another method uh, that can be used, but uh, not to prepare a nanopore size uh, aperture, but maybe tens of nanopores, tens, sorry, sorry, tens of uh, nanometer size is with wet etching. So it's a standard nanofabrication method where you use a, a mask on a, a crystal that can be etched in a, a isotropic way. In particular, silicon can be etched uh, in uh, KOH, for example, and you create this aperture that uh, go th um, down following the crystal plane of the of the silicon. Or eventually, you can play with some alternative approach using a nanoparticle as a mask to create. Uh, alternative uh, configuration. Uh, so uh, all, okay, the first, why does this two, this uh, focus electron beam uh, and FIB scattering requires uh, very expensive uh, tools. Chemical etching, uh, no, at the, but uh, it requires at least optical lithography to create the mask. So if you don't want to use a ex very expensive tool to create a nanopore, you can play with uh, alternative methods. For example, dielectric breakdown is uh, a phenomenon that uh, use uh, the break the, the, the dielectric breakdown phenomena in a, in a semiconductor when you apply a voltage in a in a, in a solvent with uh, positive and negative ions at some specific uh, voltage you create a, a, a you know you break your uh, your semiconductor and you allow the ions to pass through it it's a, a method that works very well but is extremely complicated to control the size of the pore and the number of the pore that you create uh, at the same time because at, at the specific voltage you create the pore but and then it, the the phenomena stops automatically but you don't know how much pore or you don't know the size of the pore you are creating so it's pretty complicated to control the, the process but you can do it uh, both on semiconductor and also on, uh, for example, on nanopipette. And uh, uh, another method, uh, not so extensively used, but uh, is, is a potential one, use in nanoprinting. Also, in this case, you don't need ex expensive uh, tools. You can create your, um, your nanopore in, uh, in a template. So you use uh, uh, a a neg you, you know you 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 need a negative uh, template for the imprinting, and then you create your pore in a, in a membrane that should be typically a polymer, and um, then the now uh, a very interesting family of nanopores. Uh, Dennis, I'm sorry, may, yeah. may, may uh, just make a pause here. Uh, so maybe related, so we have a question in chat about uh, like, it's maybe the general, but it somehow relates to uh, the previous slides. So how much time does it take to sequence one DNA? Uh, uh, <clears throat> and how many times you need to repeat it to have the enough information? Uh, we we discuss it later. Okay. Yeah. So, but, but then, what's the what's the uh, reason for uh, making many holes? Uh, well, the reason 
there is a, a, um, a significant difference, okay? A single all must be used if you want to play with electrical signal, okay? Because if you have multiple holes, obviously you cannot perform an electrical recording. But uh, an electrical recording and a single hole means that you can measure a single molecule per time, okay? So your, your, your measurement takes, uh, if you want to measure, you know, 100 molecule, you have to perform 100 different experiments. If you, if you play, for example, with photons, if, if you move from electrical measurement to optical okay. measurement, you are not limited to this single pore configuration, but you can measure at the same time multiple signal. And this means that you can prepare your nanopore chip in array and measure, and you can measure hundreds of thousands or million <laughs> principal uh, molecule so, at the same time. Oh, okay. The tester that is for non-electric uh, methods. Only for non-electric methods, obviously. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, this is actually the topic we will discuss later with about plasmonic nanopore. Okay. Uh, we are almost there. <laughs> Don't worry. Uh, so the other family of uh, solid state nanopore is also very interesting because they you can use 2D material to prepare your nanopores. And why 2D material? 2D material is extremely interesting because uh, the thickness of the material is uh, close to one nanometer. And if, if you consider this figure here, no, sorry. Uh, this figure is the comparison between the thickness of uh, solid state nanopore or a uh, biological nanopore here in green or in orange with respect to the graph, for example, a graphene nanopore. So the gray one. So the thickness of the graphene is comparable with the interspace distance within the element, the building block of your, our uh, molecule to be read. So it means that this, our spatial resolution is, is extremely good to perform this kind of, uh, this kind of analysis. But obviously uh, preparing a nanopore in a, solid, in a 2D material is not so complicated, but it's complicated to to transfer the 2D material on our membrane. Okay, how, how does it look like? Uh, so typically the, two, the 2D material appear like a flake and you need to transfer this flake on your membrane where you create the pore and then you need to finalize the fabrication with the pore on the 2D material. This is another representation. You, first of all, you create, you prepare your, uh, by chemical, by typically by chemical uh, uh, synthesis, your flake, and you transfer it on your membrane, and then you per, per create the uh, the pore with, uh, for example, with the electron beam scattering. Another approach you is uh, to that has been explored is to directly grow the to the material on the solid state nanopore. In this way, is more straightforward, but it's very complicated to control the process. Okay, and um, the final family of uh, of nanopore I want to mention uh, is uh, okay. If you consider to have a solid state nanopore, uh, you can also consider to have both of them, so a solid state and a biological nanopore integrated uh, between each other. Uh, in principle, you can play with the solid state uh, material, decorating it with uh, biological material. So, for example, uh, as in this representation, you can uh, coat your nanopore with uh, a B layer of uh, organic molecule in order to anchor your biorecognition elements and so on. Or eventually, you can also consider to take a biological nanopore, so a transmembrane protein, and to include it in a solid state nanopore. And uh, why you want to do this? Because uh, uh, a transmembrane protein like this, so uh, a biological nanopore typically has some additional functionality, mainly in the control of translocation. So is able to control the speed of translocation, okay? On the contrary, with a solid state nanopore, you cannot. You apply a voltage and the molecule to pass through it, okay? Okay. so. Uh, now let's move to the. And there is a question in chat regarding the 2D yeah. materials, uh, whether yeah. they are stable uh, upon uh, 
some bio measurements so and, and so they are not stable they're not stable no you can uh, you can do with just one measurement maybe mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because uh once you translocate something through the pore uh, it, it's automatically yeah. clocked or it's not stable at all so it's, it's the major limitation of 2d material is mm -hmm. a is a interesting field of research but is is a it's very complicated to perform a real experiment on them. So um, let's move to the major topic of this uh, of this talk uh, that is about uh, plasmonic nanopore. Uh, why plasmonic? Uh, plasmonic means that we have some metallic nanostructures, and the metallic nanostructures that uh, can be engineered in order to get some uh, confinement of our electromagnetic field and obviously what is more interesting is to confine our electromagnetic field exactly at the nanopore okay so we want to bring our our electromagnetic field at the nanopore in order to make it com um, interact with the with our molecule okay so this is a, a representation of the idea so with a plasmonic nanopore, obviously you can perform electrical measurement because you always have an aperture in a in a membrane, so you can apply a voltage. You can measure the ion flux through the membrane with an electrical uh, an electrical amplifier, but uh, you can at the same time measure the spectroscopy in, by using spectroscopy optical spectroscopy the signal from the molecule. Okay during the translocation and uh, you can take advantage of the field enhancement or better of the field confinement in due to the uh, configuration you want to play with uh, um, with plasmonics and this field confinement means that you can have an enhancement in the in the optical spectroscopy potential at, at least potentially Okay, uh, so we know that uh, plasmonic is uh, used to play with uh, at the nanoscale, and we can have with plasmonic we can have um, a lot of different uh, application. And all of them use uh, obviously nanomaterial and in particular uh, metallic nan nanostructures. And uh, so, the starting point for uh, plasmonic uh, nanopores and plasmonic sequencing is uh, the Pacific bioscience technology. So the, the technology I mentioned at the, at the beginning of uh, the presentation. So this technology, so the single molecule uh, sequencing used by Pacific bioscience is a photonic, uh, is a photonic method. So they read fluorescence in a cavity. And the cavity is a zero mode weight guide that is actually a plasmonic uh, structure. So it's a, it's a hole in an, in an aluminum film where you can find the field at the bottom, uh, at the bottom interface between the hole and the, and the substrate. So the light can be collected only from this very narrow volume. And it means that you can collect light emitted during the passes of something in this narrow volume okay and this is actually how it works so uh, mm, is represented in this figure uh, let me see if I uh, no. so you uh, Pacific bioscience technology um, link a pro um, a molecular motor at the bottom of the aperture so this molecular motor is uh, called DNA, DNA polymerase, that is the, is the protein used by nature to replicate the DNA molecule, okay? And this, and this motor is able to do step by step the replication of uh, the DNA molecule. So if you replicate the molecule by using fluorescent, uh, a fluorescent tagged uh, nucleotide, you can obtain a burst in, in uh, fluorescence at the, uh, four different colors corresponding to the letter that is included step by step in your molecule. Okay, and this is how it works to perform the sequencing. It's very reliable and very robust, and you can do it uh, in a very long, uh, uh, in a very long molecule. 
and you can do it in parallel because by using uh, photons you don't need to collect electrical uh, signal and you can have a chip with uh, one million of different cavity and you collect the signal just looking at the image okay and this is actually how it works uh, the, the limit is that uh, if you look at the electromagnetic field in a cavity or in a zero mode weight, weight guide prepared in aluminum the field is confined at the bottom interface but is not enhanced so the enhancement is close to one so the emission of your photons is uh, with a quantum yield exactly as the quantum yield of the die okay so it could be interesting to play with uh, plasmonics in order to increase the efficiency okay because you know that with plasmonic we can modify the configuration and playing with different materials in order to enhance this uh, emission. For example, this, uh, this configuration is this in the, the bottom, at the bottom left, we have a, uh, a very interesting configuration to enhance the uh, field and consequently the fluorescence at the, uh, the, in the cavity. And uh, you can also consider to include a nanopore okay in the cavity so in this zero mode weight guide you create a, a, a nanopore corresponding the, uh, in any single uh, hole and you obtain a nanopore configure in a, a nanopore like configuration where you can perform uh, obviously the optical uh, in parallel uh, sequencing so an example of uh, zero mode weight guide that can be improved by means of plasmonic uh, are represented here so for example if you if instead of considering aluminum uh, we consider a, a layer of gold and another layer of metal in this case gold and aluminum in the b layer configuration you can observe that in with aluminum you can confine the field at the bottom interface but with no enhancement in this in this alternative configuration is a that is a plasmonic zero mode weight guide you can obtain a, a field enhancement and consequently an enhancement in the in the emission that could be several uh, tens in particular experimentally we verified that we can have a fluorescence enhancement of uh, 25 and obviously you can consider also alternative configuration with uh, where you switch the the metal uh, and in, in any case you can obtain enhancement in the fluorescence and also an improvement in the in the volume reduction that it means uh, the actual volume where the field is confined confined so it means that you are more precise in the single molecule uh, detection so um, this is the starting point okay so a photonic uh, platform comprising metallic nanostructure in order to confine the field. So, but plasmonic nanopores means uh, that we need to have an aperture in, a, in our membrane to translocate a molecule. And um, where are the, the advantages? Is the, the advantages uh, is not limited to spectroscopy, but you, we can have a, a, a additional functionality in particular with uh, a confi an highly confined field, we know that we can generate uh, also optical forces. And optical forces means that uh, we can somehow control the translocation. And we will discuss later how it means. Uh, and we can also have some heating effects. So our optical power that is confined in a very narrow volume can generate a neat, uh, uh, an increase in temperature and in this increase in temperature can be used to drive also the translocation. So the first example, so probably the, the most simple example of plasmonic uh, uh, nanopore is this one. It's, it's a very, very simple platform where they just have a layer of, uh, of gold and they prepare the zero mode weight guide in gold to confine the field at the, uh, at the bottom uh, interface and they create the pore, okay, through the, through the substrate. 
and it's easy to be verified that you can perform at the same time electrical and optical uh, measurement. So in this case, it's not sequencing, okay? So with uh, a device like this, it's absolutely not possible to, to obtain a, a sequencing of a, of a molecule because the translocation is extremely fast. So it, it takes, uh, if you look here, the, the trace of, uh, the, of translocation, it, it's a few milliseconds, okay? And uh, milliseconds, uh, you cannot read uh, easily uh, thousands of, uh, of different uh, levels, okay? But it's a, a very powerful method to perform single molecule detection, okay? Uh, Dennis, but what? Uh, why, why is that fast? Why it's faster than in previous methods? No, in this case, is is uh, slow is slower actually slower. because the previous oh, okay. the previous method said, was mi yeah, microsecond, was my but this millisecond. It because uh, just because you apply a voltage, you know, you need to apply the voltage to drive the molecule, and also to stretch the molecule because if you don't apply the voltage, the molecule tend to, to pass through it in a very not controlled way. And once you apply the voltage, and also the voltage you needed to read the, the current, because if you don't apply a voltage, you don't, you cannot read the, the resist the resistive signal from the molecule. And uh, this means that you to introduce a force that really pull the molecule very fast. And also because the the, the thickness of the membrane is a few nanometers, so you collect the signal from few nanometers, and it takes. Is really is extremely fast, okay? okay. Uh, so um, let me let me remember. Okay, so a plasmonic nanopores. Uh, uh, okay, this is the standard, the, the the basic configuration. So it's just a layer of metal where you create a hole. So obviously, in this case, you cannot have a, a very significant enhancement. So for this reason, the community is more interested in alternative configuration where you play with antennas in particular. Uh, antennas means that you can, for example, uh, have a, a structure like this, uh, where, the, where in the nano gap, uh, you create your nanopore and you can confine in a very efficient way your field. And this confinement of the field uh, in, can increase uh, all the phenomena we discussed uh, before. So the, the enhancement in the, in the optical spectroscopy can generate Heat, it can also generate optical forces. So what about it? If you consider this uh, antenna configuration, so the, the standard bow tie configuration where you can confine the, the, in the field at, at the gap uh, where you have your, your pore. You, if you perform some simulation, uh, but you can obviously demonstrate it also in, uh, in a real experiment, you observe that uh, at the gap, uh, your uh, uh, your temperature can increase up to several tens of uh, degrees. And what does it mean? It means that your translocation time can be reduced. Uh, if you look at the translocation, typical translocation time is uh, in the fraction, is the, you know, in the order of microseconds. Okay. But this is interesting because you can uh, reduce the speed of translocation, but you can also improve the ability of the structure to attract the molecule, so to, to translocate the molecule. If you have a, a, a solution of different molecule, you can increase the ability of the, of the system to attract the molecule. The other important aspect uh, related to plasmonic is that uh, the field confinement is able, is able to eat the, the, the volume in the area of interest, but is also able to generate optical forces. Optical force is, is generated because you have a gradient in your electromagnetic field. And optical forces are extremely important in this, uh, in, this, in this particular application because it means that if you can apply a force that can bring your molecule and keep your molecule there for a while, you can increase your integration time, okay? Increasing your in integration time means that you can have a, a more, a better uh, signal to noise ratio you can maybe achieve a real sequencing of your molecule. Okay, 
Um, optical trapping in plasmonic nanopore has been demonstrated extensively, but mainly by using uh, nanoparticles, because with nanoparticles, it's more easy. So it's pretty easy to trap a nanoparticle in a cavity. And trapping the particle in the cavity, you can keep the particle there. And, and during this interval of time, you can collect the signal. Okay, You can collect the spectrum. Uh, this has been uh, uh, proposed uh, for sequencing, in particular for DNA sequencing, because uh, if you consider these optical forces at the at, in a, in a bow tie configuration, for example, it can be demonstrated that these optical forces enable to translocate the molecule in a step by step way, so switching on and off your laser. So if you look at this figure, so by switching on and off your laser. In principle, you can obtain this step-by-step -step translocation. But if you look at the, the time scale is in terms of tens of nanoseconds. So it means that you need to collect your optical spectra with a uh, time resolution of 10 nanoseconds. So it's a, it's a very fast uh, phenomena. So it it's maybe is enough to collect uh, uh, fluorescence uh, signal. But for example, if you want to collect a Raman spectrum or something like this, you cannot, okay? It's, it's extremely complicated. So plasmonic nanopore uh, are in particular very interesting because you can play with spectroscopy, with optical spectroscopy, with enhanced uh, phenomena. In particular, we are interested in, uh, in Raman spectroscopy and in fluorescence spectroscopy. Uh, here in IIT, uh, I typically use uh, um, 3D plasmonic nanopores. Uh, what and 3D a 3D configuration has some advantages with respect to the planar one because you can have more uh, flexibility in, in terms of geometry, and also you can have an integrated nano channel in the, the in your nanopore that can be used as a functional elements to control the translocation or to, to stretch the molecule and so on. And you can obviously obtain a confinement of the field at the, at the aperture. So uh, let's start from the, the very beginning. So a very simple uh, 3D nanopore where you, we have a, a ring of gold on top of a dielectric uh, pillar and an, an integrated nano channel. If we consider the, this ring with different uh, diameter, obviously decreasing the diameter of the ring, we increase the enhancement uh, and the confinement of the field. Uh, I start uh, from this uh, from this because it's simpler to be understood, but uh, obviously the, the, the diameter is too large to perform any single molecule detection. And uh, anyway, how can we demonstrate the, the functionality of this, uh, of this plasmonic structure? We can, for example, decorate uh, our, our ring with uh, dyes, with fluorescence, uh, with fluorescent molecule, and to check for the enhancement. And for example, we did it with a couple of uh, different dyes, and we verified both the enhancement in, uh, in the, the single emission of the dyes and also the, the, the energy transfer with, between, between them. And also the energy transfer in terms of forced energy transfer can be engineered by means of plasmonic nanostructure. So we can obtain an enhancement also in this particular phenomena. And this could be interesting because if we consider a configuration where, for example, we have a nanopore and we decorate our nanopore with one uh, of the two dyes, for example, in a, in a fret uh, configuration, we have a donor and an acceptor, so two dyes that they are able to exchange energy between them. We decorate our, uh, our pore with one of them and we translocate the other one. We can obtain a single molecule uh, spectroscopy based on this exchange of energy in a, in a plasmonic nanopore. And uh, okay, this is, has been also verified uh, uh, in a very simple experiment. But obviously, this particular structure is not good for 
for sequencing, but uh, is, a, is the starting point for uh, an interesting method to fabricate uh, nanopore size, uh, nanometer size nanopore. And in particular, if we consider that we can fabricate easily this ring in a large array, uh, okay, if we go, want to go down to few nanometer in diameter, this is complicated by means of, uh, for example, of focus ion beam lithography. But it can be done, for example, with this photocatalytic uh, method. So in particular, in particular, we use this phenomena where we illuminate our structure and uh, our structure enable to confine the field uh, inside the ring. So it means that inside the ring, we have uh, uh, accumulation of hot electrons. And these electrons can be used to reduce, uh, um, for example, a metallic salt that can be uh, that can enable to grow metal inside the pore. Okay, this is the final uh, the structure that can be obtained by in, by using this approach. So we just need to illuminate everything to excite the ring and to add in the solution our metallic salt. And this is some uh, some uh, you know some simulation of what we obtain. So this is the starting configuration with the ring and the electromagnetic field inside it. And if we shrink it with another metal, we can confine the field exactly in the pore with a huge enhancement. Okay, this is another example of, uh, of these results and some characterization of the enhancement. Okay, this is about uh, Fluorescence. So fluorescence means that our molecule need to be not label free. So we need to, to tag our molecule with the fluorescent dye. And we can perform some single molecule enhanced fluorescence in the translocation. Okay. This is pretty straightforward, but is a, is a limit because uh, if you want to discriminate different uh, element inside the molecule you need to you need to play with different colors and you are limited in the maximum no number of colors you can play with but for example with protein we know we mentioned at the beginning that we have 20 different uh, elements that we want to discriminate and this is not possible with 20 colors in the visible to to encode to decode uh, the sequence of a molecule on the contrary, if we play, for example, with uh, the other uh, spectroscopic method uh, used in plasmonics, uh, that is uh, Raman spectroscopy, Raman's, Raman spectroscopy uh, means that every single molecule has its own uh, Raman fingerprint. So in principle, okay, just in principle, every single molecule can be discriminated by means of Raman. For sure, every single amino acid and every single nucleotide, so every building block of the, our biomolecule has its own fingerprint. So it means that we, if we are able to read uh, sequentially the spectrum from the molecule passing through the pore, we can uh, decode the information, okay? Uh, SERS, uh, so surface enhancement drama spectroscopy has been used uh, in, uh, during the recent year in nanopores by applying it to different uh, platforms, in particular to glass nanopipette decorated with uh, metallic nanoparticle and uh, also with uh, nanoporous structure. Uh, in particular with nanoporous structure, we we considered uh, this configuration, so this, this, the theoretical uh, configuration for search-based sequencing, and we try to implement this in a in a simple nanopore prepared in a nanoporous uh, metal. Nanoporous metals it means that we have uh, a structure that is already made of mm, a tons of different nanopores. And the molecule is forced to pass through it uh, in, like, just like a filter. And this gap that uh, is, is present in the surface is able to confine the field in uh, as a localized plasmon. So the interesting aspect in this particular experiment is that, okay, we need to 
collect our Raman signal for at least uh, several tens of milliseconds. So in this experiment, we collect the signal for 100 milliseconds. And if we consider that the typical translocation is in the order of microseconds, it seems that uh, uh, from the experimental results, it seems that we are able to reduce the speed of translocation because we can collect the signal for a, a, an interval that is, is very larger with respect to what we expect to observe. And um, so in order to, to explain this phenomena, so this reduced speed of translocation, we considered optical forces because optical forces can be, <coughs> um, can play a role in this, uh, in this phenomena. So we consider the, the field uh, um, gradient uh, in, the, in the nanopore structure. And we verify that these optical forces can be comparable with the thermal force uh, uh, in, in the system, but probably not enough to explain this very large uh, reduction in the speed of translocation. So the other potential uh, explanation is that our nanoporous structure, the nanoporous structure is something that uh, is also a mechanical obstacle to the molecule. So to verify it, we in introduce an additional layer of porous uh, metal. So in this case, it's a, di a dielectric metal, no, sorry, a dielectric layer. And we verify that a me the mechanical obstacles can increase even more the, the um, the number of events that we can detect. So it can reduce even more the speed of translocation and increase the, the signal to noise ratio and consequently the efficiency of this, the system to perform a single molecule detection. And to obtain, is not actually sequencing, but to extract some information from the real contents of uh, uh, in, in, our, in our DNA molecule. Uh, okay. Dennis, I'm sorry, yeah. we are uh, a bit approaching to the uh, like, running out of, of time. So uh, yeah, I'd like to, to, to close to the final, to the final part. Thing. Yeah, yeah, don't worry. I don't, I don't need too much. Five minutes. Okay. Okay. So optical forces can be used, uh, as I mentioned before, with nanoparticles. So if we consider a plasmonic nanopore, we can play with a metallic nanoparticle and the nanoparticle can, can be forced to to interact with the nanopore by means of optical forces. And if the nanoparticle is something like uh, a, nano, a nanostar, so with nanoburps, we can generate this cavity. And within this cavity, we have a very narrow volume where we can have our molecule. And in this very narrow volume, we can be um, sensitive uh, and with a spatial resolution comparable to the sub element in, in the molecules so with uh, really with a single nucleotide or single amino acid uh, resolution. And this is uh, a representation, for example, of the different spectrum of the different amino acids that you can obtain by Raman spectroscopy. Uh, another method uh, that could be interesting to explore with is not based only on optical strapping, but you can play with uh, additional forces, like for example, uh, magnetic forces. It, and you, you can do it by introducing a magnetic material in our in your uh, plasmonic nano, uh, nanopore. And in this case, you can have a, man, a, a magnetoplasmonic structure, a magnetoplasmonic pore, where you can trap your uh, particle by not by light, but by the external for by external stimuli like a magnetic field. Okay, so it means that you don't need a, a light source that can interact with your molecule and with your spectroscopy, okay? So the final part is about 2D material. And we discussed the, um, the major advantages of 2D material is related to the very, very narrow thickness, so the, the high spatial resolution that we can obtain. So it's very complicated to fabricate uh, um, a nanopore with 2D material. So because we need to, or to transfer the, the layer on uh, our chip or eventually to grow directly on the, on the metal. But you can consider alternative methods. For example, if you have a solution with your flakes, we try to, uh, well, actually we verify that it's possible to, to control these, uh, transfer of the flake on top of the nanopores, not by mechanical uh, transfer, but by applying, for example, 
by using chemical functionalization. In this case, we use a di di DTL molecule uh, between uh, the metallic uh, nanopore and the, the transition metal decalcogenite flakes, and we can decorate our nanopore. Or eventually, we, you can play with the negatively charged uh, properties of the flake, typical in, uh, for example, in transition metal decalcogenized in solution are negatively charged. So if you apply uh, a, a potential, you can drive uh, your flake uh, towards the positive, the, the positive electrode. And if you use your nanopore array as a filter, you can stop the flake exactly on the on the nanopore and decorate all the flakes in uh, in a pretty good controlled way to obtain this 2d material uh, 2d material layer on the nanopore obviously there you need to create uh, the pore so you can do it uh, by ttm and in order to obtain very narrow pore or if you if you want to obtain something like 10 nanometer pore you can Pass, uh, pass on top of your structure with uh, a fast scan of focus ion beam and obtain this particular nanopore. And this is a simulation of what it means to play with uh, 2D material because 2D material is typically, a, sorry, there is an ambulance here, is um, a high index the, an high index material. So it means that it's able to, to to confine the field even more. So if you start from the metallic uh, nanopore and you include the, the 2D material, you can bring your field exactly in the 2D material uh, uh, aperture. And it means that your field is confined in, in one nanometer in, uh, in, uh, in thickness, okay? And okay, this is, this is just a demonstration of the enhancement in the spectroscopy and that's all. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, thank you very much for for uh, a brilliant review and and very nice results. So it's actually the, the level of technology is quite fascinating. Uh, is it uh, is it done uh, in, in, in 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 Italy or or what, where the technology uh, is made? So with the plasmonic structures. No, uh, well, I show it um, almost all the results I showed it has been made by me here <laughs> but yeah, obviously yeah. The, the topic has been explored also uh, as well by other guys so. right, right, right. no no that's that's uh, obvious so uh please colleagues if there are any some any questions uh raise your hands or uh, i think misha is misha Mihail is in so please uh okay oh sorry misha. Uh, yes yes oh. thanks a lot dennis so i have just a very brief question so um Am I right that uh, your plasmonics or these plasmonic nanopores have the same, uh, actually the same problems um, as other materials with closing, for example, or unwanted attachment of organic compounds uh, uh, when they pass through them? Yes, uh, this is a problem to related to all the solid state uh, nanopore, mm -hmm. but uh, you can uh, play with, for example, with uh, uh, you know, with the functionality related to, you know, for example, you can use a metallic nanopore only if you de if you finalize the fabrication with a, dial a very thin dielectric layer, the mm -hmm. typically deposited by atomic layer deposition in order to avoid charge effects or additional effects due to light interact and water interacting with metals. And you can also obviously functionalize your pore with uh, biomolecules uh, in order to avoid uh, you know, uh, undesired uh, um, clogging and so on. So uh, it's not impossible, okay? But obviously the, just the bare metal pore is, uh, is very complicated to be used. Okay, thank you. So any other question we have? Maybe time for one, one other question. Uh, <clears throat> maybe a general question, Dennis. So, why the plasmonics? So there are two companies already startups working or companies. I don't know. So why plasmonics? I mean, it's a multi multi billion companies actually. Okay, okay, probably yeah, yeah. So it's, 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 then it's even even more than that. So are there any? So, so why are there any 
companies working with this uh, plasmonic hose or why it's not commercialized? Are there any fundamental? Uh, I don't think so. There are, um, there are companies that sell um, solid state nanopore. Uh, I'm not aware of companies that sell plasmonic nanopores. I don't think so. So plasmonic nanopore is an interesting topic, but is a, a, a subfield of the huge field of reserves of, of nanopores and of solid state nanopores. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think that uh, it's something like the 30% of the solid state nanopore field. Okay. Uh, uh, Ivan Tertiarev, please. Okay, th thank you very much. Uh, I have a short question about the, uh, what do you think, which method for slowing down the path of the molecule is the most perspective in this field of solid state nanopores? So I, f I have two opinion on that. Uh, I think that one solution is to enable faster detection. So if you go towards uh, faster detection, it means that, for example, with ph photons, you can, in principle, go to in the in the microsecond range or in the nanosecond range, but you really need a ultra fast spectroscopy approach. And uh, if you want to decrease the speed of translocation, you need uh, um, you can play with uh, optical forces, as I briefly explained it today, or you need. Uh, to integrate in your system uh, uh, an, an hybrid pore. So it means that you need to integrate in your solid state platform a biological motor. So, so it's a, a protein like a biological nanopore that is able to control the translocation, okay? Step by step. But it's more, more much more complicated. Optical forces can be a solution. Okay. And it's actually what the, the community is exploring at the moment. Uh, thank you very much. Very interesting that optical forces may uh, may have here some uh, uh, practical application. Yeah, yeah, but is 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 extensively explored in uh, in Anapora at the moment. Okay, Duro, I think we need to uh, we need to conclude. So uh, I need to thank. I like to thank Dennis for for excellent talk. And uh, uh, we hope to uh, see you again uh, soon, probably. Uh, but then let's uh, go on with that. So uh, the next seminar will be announced later. Uh, so keep in touch, follow our updates. And thank you very much for your attendance. And thank you, Dennis. Thank you.